What's going on, gardeners? It's Saturday, February 25th, and spring is only a few weeks away here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. On today's video, I'm going to share with you four reasons to start a straw bale garden and why you may want to try it for the first time. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications, and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom-designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Did you know that you can plant plants directly into straw bales and they will grow just like they're growing inside a container garden except you'll be growing them in a completely soilless medium depending on the situation you're in this could have tremendous advantages here you can see 13 bales of wheat straw I just purchased these and I will be growing my indeterminate tomatoes in them this season I'll be planting the plants directly inside of them after they go through a very simple seasoning process and that will be like growing them almost in a container garden just like you see here except I won't need to add any kind of potting mix wait a minute you're telling me I'm going to have to go out and buy bales of straw and season them what does that even mean and why would I even want to do this well I'm glad you asked there are four huge advantages to growing a straw bale garden the first reason is that it's a lot cheaper than building a raised bed and filling it with soil each of these bales of straw cost me six dollars so there are 13 of them total I spent 78 dollars for all of these now each straw bale is 1.5 feet wide by three feet long so that is going to give me a row of straw bales that is one and a half feet wide by 39 feet long or 58.5 square feet of growing area Compare that price and square footage to building a raised bed. Each of these raised beds are four feet wide by 10 feet long or 40 square feet of growing area. So that's roughly 50% less growing area than all of those straw bales. And with the price of lumber currently and fill dirt, it is probably going to cost you more money to build and fill one of these raised beds. So not only will those straw bales cost you less money up front, but you're going to get more surface area to grow in. Now, if you're concerned about the longevity of a straw bale garden versus that of a raised bed garden, don't you worry, we will talk about that later in this video. The second reason to build a straw bale garden is portability. Not all of us have a yard large enough that we can build lots of raised beds. Also, some of us may be renting and we don't own the property, so we can't dig up the yard. In this case, straw bales are perfect because they are very lightweight and you can easily transport them anywhere. Even in my case where my backyard is plenty large enough to have an in-ground garden, I still maintain a large container garden area. Many of you have asked me, why do I bother doing that? I could easily tear this fence down on my in-ground garden and I could expand it into this space and make my in-ground garden even larger. But I don't do that and I maintain a large container garden even though I could expand my in-ground garden. And the reason why I do that is because a container garden gives me something that an in-ground garden cannot give me flexibility. An in-ground garden is finite. You can only do what you can do out in the elements inside the growing season. But with a container garden, I can expand my imagination. My container garden allows me to grow so many different things that my in-ground garden cannot. Once things root in the ground, you cannot move them. So they are subject to all of the elements and the weather that you get in your exact location. With my container garden, I can grow things like key limes. I can grow things like coffee. I can grow dozens of different varieties of figs or citrus trees that I don't have the room to grow in ground because I can keep them small in pots. So it allows me to have all of this diversity by keeping the roots above ground that I cannot get inside an earth garden. It also allows me to grow things outside of the growing season. When I plant things in ground, they are subject to the weather. So if we get a late frost or freeze, then pretty much my plants are doomed. Even if you're growing inside a straw bale garden and you don't have a nice neat container like this, you could easily pick up the bale of straw, load it up inside a garden cart, and you can cart that bale of straw inside your garage and protect it if you were to get a late frost or freeze. You cannot do that with an earth garden. So flexibility is key, and that's why I love having a mobile portable garden. And I can't forget the renters among us. Before I moved to North Carolina, I rented apartments for 13 years straight. And while most of them did have usable backyards, I obviously could not dig them up and grow in ground. I had to grow in containers and five gallon buckets, which was always a bit of a painstaking effort. And I know how many of you watching this may be renting and feel as though you have very limited growing space, or it may be way too expensive for you to go out and buy yourself nursery containers 
N potting mix. They can add up and it can cost several dozen dollars for a large container to actually fill it up full of mix. This straw bale solution is perfect for the renter because one straw bale costs less than one large nursery container, let alone the soil medium it takes to fill it up. And when you're ready to move out, you simply take the straw and you mulch it somewhere. It's really easy to get rid of, a lot easier to get rid of than heavy waterlogged potting mix. The third reason to grow a straw bale garden is it eliminates or comes close to eliminating the risk of soil-borne bacteria, soil-borne fungal diseases, and root-knot nematodes, all which were a major problem in my garden last year. Last year, I lost about a dozen, maybe more, indeterminate tomato plants to some type of wilt. It was either fusarium wilt, bacterial wilt, or something else. But many of my plants shriveled up and died mid-season, and I wasn't able to get a harvest off of them. Also, when I pulled out the roots later in the year, I also found that more than half a dozen were infected with root-knot nematodes. So it seemed very clear to me that I need to give the soil in my perimeter beds that encircle my garden a rest because they're starting to harbor nematodes and soil bacteria or fungal issues. Because I'm going to be growing in a soilless medium, that is not going to be an issue this year. All of these straw bales are going to sit comfortably on top of the weed barrier that I have down at my feet right here and I'm not going to more than likely have to deal with those wilt viruses or root knot nematodes. While nothing is 100% and technically anything that touches the ground can get infected, at the very least it's going to dramatically drop my odds or it's going to push those diseases and problems much later into the season so I'll be able to get a much better harvest before any potential diseases start to rear their ugly head. And the fourth reason to start a straw bale garden is sustainability. Many of you in the beginning of this video may have thought when I said it's cheaper to grow a straw bale garden than a raised bed garden, you thought, well, my raised bed garden is going to last 10 or more years, whereas you're going to have to recycle these straw bales and replace them every year or two. So that cost is going to add up. And that is true. However, you simply don't throw this straw away when it's done. You use this as mulch and you repurpose it around the yard. So while while it is true that this is going to have to be replaced every one to two seasons after they wear out, because this is going to double as mulch, you won't have to buy any mulch that you normally will have to buy at the end of the season. If you've been following my channel for a few years, you know that every single November I buy bales of straw and I build cages around my banana plants and I stuff them full of straw in order to insulate them to give them a chance to fruit here in Zone 8, North Carolina, and it has worked great over the years for the most part. Well, guess how many bales of straw I have to buy every November in order to stuff all my banana plants? 13, the exact same number that I'm using to build my straw bale garden. So. Every single November, I have to buy 13 bales of straw anyway. So I already have that cost in the budget accounted for. So really, I'm growing my straw bale garden completely for free. I'm just buying all the straw bales in February instead of November. So all we're doing is we're buying the straw for my bananas up front. We're going to grow tomatoes in them all throughout the growing season. The tomatoes are more than likely going to be killed off by diseases in August, maybe September at the absolute latest if I have a good season. And then come November, we're going to use them all to stuff our our banana plants. But wait, there's more. When our frosts stop in late March or early April, I simply tear down these cages around my banana trees and then I spread the mulch all over the ground. So that straw once again has a third life. It's going to be used to mulch all of my fruit trees. All the straw that you see on the ground here was left over from what I was using to stuff my banana cages last winter. So this straw is basically in a state of severe decay. So it's just about ready for me to renew this straw. So in one month, the cages are going to come off those banana plants and we're going to repurpose that straw. So while a 75 to $100 investment is enough to build a raised bed that would last you about 10 years, that raised bed is only good for one thing, raised bed gardening. For that same or similar, maybe slightly less expensive, $78 investment, you can use that as a straw bale garden, then you can use that leftover straw to protect your sensitive winter plants, and then you can reuse that again in the spring to mulch your entire yard. So because you went and you bought all of that straw up front, you can use that for those three different purposes. So if you have to buy mulch annually, you can basically cross that cost off your budget because you're just buying it in advance and you're going 
going to garden in it first. Now look, I know a straw bale garden is not going to be right for everybody. If you live in an area that has wonderful fertile soil there already, or if you have lumber and you like building the raised beds and you don't mind spending the money up front, you know they're gonna last you a very long period of time, and you don't have a lot of soil-borne diseases or root knot nematodes to worry about, it's tough to beat the value of a raised bed or earth bed garden. However, those type of gardens simply aren't for everybody. I also recognize that for many of us, we simply can't have a raised bed garden or an earth bed garden for a number of factors. Maybe the lumber and the cost of the soil is just too expensive or maybe it's too much work for you to build the bed, move the bed, and fill the bed. And I get that. Maybe you're a renter and you simply don't have the flexibility to dig up the earth. Or maybe you just don't have the room for a raised bed garden or an earth bed garden. These straw bales give us tremendous amount of flexibility. They're light, they're mobile, and when the end of the season is done, you can just spread the straw all over flower beds or wherever you can and reuse it as mulch and then it's gone. No muss, no fuss. Or maybe you're like me and you just want to learn something new and try something exciting because you've never done it before. Whatever your reason, if you're interested in starting a straw bed garden, please follow along this channel because I will have a lot of videos on it this winter into the spring and we are going to be seasoning our straw bales soon and I will show you how to do it in a video in a few weeks. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden, please check out my Amazon storefront link in the video description, expand the video description, and click on that link to see everything I use in real life. And while you're there, check out my Spreadshop link for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Okay, it's time to feed Dale. We're going to give Dale a choice for what he wants for breakfast. Either the homemade food I made him, or the dry kibble. We will give him a choice. Dale, which one do you want? Well, I think that was, I think that was a pretty distinct answer. Dale's homemade food this week is pork loin, calf liver, carrots, and kale from the garden with jasmine rice cooked in bone broth with a couple of his vitamins on top. You ready, buddy? Oh, does he love this? Okay. Very good, Dale. Let us know how you like it. Oh, he loves it. You can see it in his eyes.